In this video, we're going to be fitting a logistic model to data. So in our example here, we have to estimate the amount of defoliation caused by the gypsy moth during a given year. A forester counts the number x of eggs, or of egg masses rather, on 1 40th of an acre. So it's a circle of radius about 18.6 feet in the fall. The percent of defoliation y the next spring is shown in the following table. So we're going to use the regression feature of a graphing utility to find a logistic model for this data. So we're going to start by entering our data into the list of our calculators. So we're going to go to Stat, Edit, and then we're going to put our data in. It says I've, I've done mine. So go, I'm going to go ahead and have you do that. So go ahead and push pause and put your data in. And then when you're done, push play, and we'll continue from there. Now that that's in, we're going to calculate our logistic model. So we're going to go to Stat, arrow over to Calculate, and we're going to go down to Logistic Model. So we'll arrow down to Option B, where it says Logistic. We're going to hit Enter. So we want to be our List 1 and our List 2. And you want to make sure that you've got that in there. We're going to hit Calculate. And that's going to give us our A, our B, and our C values, which are going to allow us to write our model. So let's go ahead and let's write that down in model form. And if you're wondering kind of what model form is, it tells you right here what that should look like. But we're going to actually write ours as a fraction. So we're going to have y equals 99.75 divided by Point or 0 0.069 plus 7.16 times e to the negative 0.069x. Actually, if we just double check that really fast, oh, yep, that should be a 1. That's what I thought. So this value right here, that should be a 1. So 1 plus. A times E raised to the B, negative BX. Okay, so now what we're ready to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to graph this model in our stat plot. So we're going to make sure that our stat plot is turned on and it says list one and list two. And then we're going to go into our Y equals and we're going to put in our equation. So we're going to alpha Y equals to set up our fraction. So 99.75 over 1 plus 7.16 times E raised to the negative 0.069x. And then from here, we're going to need to go to our window and make some adjustments. So for x is my minimum is 0 and my maximum is 100. So I'm going to go to a minimum of 0. But my maximum, I might put 150 and count by 25s. For my y minimum, we had a minimum of 12. So I'm going to keep that at 0. But my maximum was 99. So I'm going to go ahead and make that 110. And I'm going to count by 25s. Then we're going to go ahead and hit graph. So we're going to see our points from our scatter plot and how our model fits that pretty much perfectly. So our next question, part B, says how closely does the model represent the data? Well, looking at it, we can see that by using the graphing utility to graph the actual data and the model in the same viewing window, it looks as though the model is a good fit for the actual data. And we're done. So when we have a list of data, making a scatter plot is a very helpful way to get an idea of what type of data we might use, but then also using the regression feature in our calculators to find different models and compare them with our data set is a great way to find the model that's going to fit our data the best. 